Okay, so today is a bit of a wrap-up day. <clears throat> um, I shouldn't say wrap-up, but um, there's been a hundred million little things that we've had to do. That's the challenge whenever you're building fresh and building a, a one-off design, is you're constantly prototyping. So you have to fit, put in, take out, and do that over and over again. And so there's a few things that, that we get to do today for the last time, like this panel has to come out um, speakers go in. I'm replacing the speakers because the factory ones were just destroyed over time. So they'll go in. Reflectix is going to go in. This panel goes back on for the last time, thank goodness. Then all of this structure can go back in for the last time. I'll tell you, I've taken it out probably like six or seven times. But now that everything's fitted, everything's just right, uh, it's really time for it all to go back together, uh, as well as the cabinets. Those are pretty much all done except for the two front face pieces that that go around the countertop oh yeah that's new i put that in yesterday really once we get the uh the cabinets all done then the bed system can go back in i'm also going to modify it i actually came up with another idea to narrow the bottom tray by about two or three inches just to give more clearance left and right so you'll see a lot of that in this video today but yeah let's uh, uh let's get to it i think we only have we're not leaving tomorrow, but we want to leave the day after tomorrow, so we got work to do. I started by removing the seat sections. They were staying exactly as they are, so I needed them out of the way. When prototyping, it's important to plan, measure, and plan some more. The longitudinal support rails needed to move inward, but to match the seat sections, the support arms needed to stay in the exact same place. To do this, I was swapping them to the outside of the structure, so I had to move the longitudinal supports in by 1 and 3 8 inches. This required new access holes for the end fasteners that hold the support in place. Once I was certain I had done my math correctly, I drilled the access holes, I also had used some corner brackets after running out of end fasteners, so I replaced those while I had the support rail undone. I then drilled the rest of the access holes for the passenger side support rail. I also needed to make a few changes to the internal support bars to accommodate the narrower footprint. This required multiple access holes to be redrilled as well as ends to be retapped after cutting the previously tapped ends off in the shortening process. Once the cuts were made, I swapped the support arms from the inside to the outside and checked my measurements before retapping the cut ends and reassembling the passenger side. Then it was time to switch to the driver's side and restart the process of measuring and drilling access holes. This is easier to do while the support rail is attached, adding some rigidity and support. Marilyn is always full of questions as I do most of my thinking in my head and as a result, she sometimes struggles to keep up with my crazy ideas. But let me slow this down now and bring you up to speed on what I did to solve this little problem. So the other thing I'm doing here, you may have remembered this from other videos, but I ran out of these things. Well, I ended up finding about 50 of them hidden somewhere in plain sight. They were in one of these trays, but then the other shipment also came. So, so these literally go in here and they'll replace these corners. They're way stronger than the corners and way more effective and much more clean because you don't see anything on the outside. They fasten from the inside. So I'm also going to take these apart, replace those while we're rebuilding everything else. And that will finish this. So we don't have to do any more modifications or replacing those old corner brackets that we really don't want long term. Because yeah, they're okay, but like the tapping and screwing is much more sure, right? The a tapped end is, they actually have in their documentation really good engineering drawings on how strong each one is they show load forces how far out what the weight is how the corner fails when it fails so you know which ones are more capable than others and these ones i think are like fourth strongest these ones are second strongest 
They have another end anchor fastener, but you have to mill a big corner and it does the same thing that this does, only in a more intentional and, and rigid way from what I understand. So these are second strongest, you said? Uh, yes, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they're not the strongest ones. The strongest one was that end anchor fastener, I think they call it. And those are just end fasteners. As well as Loctite. But yeah, you go through these like crazy when you have a lot of little corners. They uh, eat up a lot of time, so as inexpensive as they are, when you order them online, you want a ton of them. And uh, pro tip, I don't know if you talked about this, but you got those on AliExpress, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. They're much, much cheaper on AliExpress. Um, so this one needs to come off so that this one can go on. I'm going to turn that a little bit more. So I'm going to snug them up just so that they're a little bit firmly in place. And I will tighten them up properly later once it's all fitted together. So that's one thing I love about this stuff is it's so easy to make edits. This is where it used to sit and now we've moved it in just so that there's more room underneath the tray. Uh, so I'm gonna keep on going now. This corner needs to go in. So with a couple simple cuts, a few extra holes, we now have a fully functional modified bed that fits better in the van. The only thing that's more difficult is when you cut off too much. So always, always, always measure or you're going to find yourself repurposing pieces all the time. It smells like camp out here. Um, I think someone has a fire in the park. Now we tighten it all down. Oh no, 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 no. What's Damn up? It. That one, I'm gonna undo all of it. So, this is the joy of, of when you don't get the steps just right. Um, this bolt here needs to go in the end of this. Now that everything's together, there's no way I can get it to flex enough. So I have to take all of this apart and make sure I put that one on first. So uh, take your time, move slowly through your needed changes. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll make less of these mistakes than I will. But I guarantee you will make them good as you try to plan, I always seem to run into this. It's essentially kind of like a big puzzle, right? Yeah. If you don't get it all right. Puzzle that you choose the how difficult it is.
when you design it. I guess I like difficult puzzles. Okay, now this one has to tighten down with all of the rest in place. Now I can tighten everything down. And then um, do you essentially have to do the same thing on the other side where you already did the other side? The other side? side's already done. I see. Yeah. And when do you put the arm hinge back on just after? Oh yeah, once all back to You want this to still be recording? I know you can. Okay.